Thanks for clicking on the video. Hit us with a like on Facebook, a subscribe on YouTube, a follow on Instagram. You can find us at homie and the dude. That is at homie and the dude. Thanks again. Enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to Homie and the Dude episode 29. We are jacked today to be uh, in the company of Russell Powell. Russell is an amazing artist. He has a type of art that's really interesting that we're really excited to kind of get to know and understand. It's called hand stamping. So super, super excited to, to spend some time with Russell. Russell, before we start, we're just going to throw a shout out to our sponsors, uh, Vist.Kitchen. Vist.Kitchen is a vegan takeaway here in Bristol, England. They do incredible vegan food. They're blown up on Wriggle, five stars, 10 out of 10s all day long. So please uh, check them out if you are up for vegan food. Even if you're not up for vegan food, check them out. It's really, really yummy food. Thursdays and Saturdays are their pickup days. It's Vist.Kitchen. Cool. Great. Russell, Russell. Powell. <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> How you guys doing? Thanks for having me. No, thank you for being here. It's, it's our absolute pleasure, man. Um, I want to start off by asking you, dude, obviously, I, I told you before the show that I've been following you for a really long time, and um, I fell in love with your art because it's something that's so unique and so different, and um, it really feels like there's a massive personal touch because not only are you creating the work with your hands, but you leave an imprint of, you know, something that is very specific to you on the canvas and the work that you do. So what allowed you to build this concept did it come from the finger painting you do with your students like where where did where did it come from give us give us an idea where you where you came uh, <clears throat> what originated with uh, i used to run a summer program here at the school i teach at uh this is probably almost six years ago now mm -hmm. five and a half years ago and i would paint my students face every day we're doing adventures on wheels so the kids are out there skateboarding riding bikes and I would paint all their faces and then off they go skateboarding and biking. I'm just kind of sitting there. So I started originally doing it on the top of my hand. I'm sitting there. I just like paint a little eyeball, you know, messing with the kids and stuff. And then that was really it. I took a photo of it. You know, I posted it on Facebook. I didn't have an Instagram at the time and then got an Instagram. And then I did, a, I remember when Robin Williams passed away, I did a portrait of, of Robin Williams. It wasn't great, but <laughs> Uh, and then just washed it off, you know, took a photo of it, posted, it, washed it off. And then after a while, it was like, there's gotta be a way to transfer this, like a fingerprint, right? So, you know, fast forward, you know, failed attempts, hours and hours of failed attempts, different papers, different like paints, moisture techniques. Uh, yeah, and then I slowly just worked and worked and worked at it. And here I am. Nice. How many years it's ago? It's from the kids, uh, almost six, five and a half. And it was all the, yeah, just from the kids. Had I not like been painting the kids' faces, I just would have never started painting on my hand. And then it just kind of evolved, really. That's amazing. You yeah. nailed it. You like, you predicted that. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, I rolled the dice there. I rolled it real good. Um, no, that's, that's freaking awesome because it, I, I mean, it, it allows you to find passions within your work. And they say, you know, there's no point in working within anything if you don't love what you're doing. If you can then combine a whole right. other area of, possibly passion, money-making, all, all of the things that require in life um, to be what is, I guess, deemed successful and happy, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely, so. I, I think that's amazing that you found that through that way. And I think also, like you said, though, it's not an easy process. You know, it, it sounded like you went through a lot of trials and tribulations. Did you find like something <clears throat> that's been super interesting is have any of the paints like done damage to your hands or have you had like any issues with that throughout the years? No, I mean, it's, it's just non-toxic, like mm. children's Halloween paint, really. Like it's not, mm. I mean, I do a little bit of mixture with other paints to make it specific, yeah. but it's all non-toxic. Um, I've been doing it almost every day for all these years and nothing, all good. That's amazing. The, the thing yeah. is like, okay, there's a process, right? And so I could, I could do my own, you know, style of hand stamping, dude, your hand stamping stuff. I mean, there's a reason why you have a presence um, in, in social media because it's, it's like, it's so incredible. Like, so I'm, I'm, I guess the, what I'm, there's a process, right? You are capturing someone's face in a really, really accurate way on your hand. And then that process of actually putting it, stamping it on paper translates to 
equally as you know as accurate on paper and it's it's like uncanny some of this you know most all of the the prints that you have on instagram you're just like wow and also there's you know they're all fairly recognizable as well so there's there's something in there as well yeah thank you um there i I like to say i have it down but i mean just last week i blew it twice you know um what i had on my hand looked exactly like what the image i'm working off of but once it's stamped, it looked like a completely different human. So there's a lot of frustration to it as well. And then when I have commission work, if I'm doing a portrait of a child or a family member or grandfather, grandmother, if it doesn't come out exact, I have to wash it and start all over, right? Whereas if I'm painting on a canvas, I can keep laying, you know, over light layering the paint until I get what I want. But the hand stamping, it's a one shot. And if it's not exact, it's out the window. So, I mean, <laughs> as much as I post, um, cause I usually do a, almost a piece every day with the video and whatnot. Um, there's a lot of work that's not shared because <laughs> it just didn't come through. So, but I mean, dude, I fully understand that, you know, as, as someone who skateboards, I fall over filming a trick a hundred times. And then the one time I land it is what goes on social media. Well, that's the one time yeah. you play. And, yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think, I think with, um, with, you know, what you're saying in terms of you, you went through this process and you learned and you, you've adapted and whatnot. Um, has it been a big thing with like speed? Have you found that you've needed to learn how to draw fast? Cause obviously with paint drying and whatnot, has that become something that's you've had to train and work into your system? Yeah. And, you know, obviously since I'm working on my hand, I, I, there's no pencil involved. So, I mean, I haven't drawn anything with a pencil in years. Whereas, yeah. you know, when I, when I first, you know, prior uh, to doing the hand stamping work, I was painting like small Altoy tins, like little mint boxes, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, which like translated almost to the size of a palm. So like all that work that I did that for like two years really helped me with the small details. But again, I was drawing with pencil on the Altoid tin that I had primed. Um, whereas now it's just straight to my hand. There's no pencil. So, and I do, I have gotten very quick, you know, quick at it, um, which also translates to canvas. So when I get hired, like commission work for canvases, oil on canvas, there's no pencil. I just paint, right? I can like look at something and reproduce it rather quickly. So yeah, some days though, it's crazy. Um, I did this princess dye piece behind me, like, like that one of the fastest pieces I've done Mm. and I'll and then sometimes I'll like look into a piece it's like super difficult that I think is gonna be super difficult and I'll spend hours and I'll stamp and it looks nothing like what I'm working on so some days it flows better than others that's for sure but um the speed without the pencil is really yeah I'm pretty rapid rapid fire with this part (laughs) that's why I almost almost post so much that people um don't see it it falls down to my feed to where they don't even know that I've done it or it's yeah. available. I mean, I have a, a very large collection of original works because, and then I'll do a repost, you know, of a piece mm. that I really like. And they're like, oh, I had no idea. I'd never seen that. I didn't know it was for sale. It's because it's fallen down so far in my feed because I'm just constantly, <laughs> you know, <laughs> up- uploading work, but it's a Turning good Turning it out. So yeah. two, I guess two things. One is, um, so you did a Princess Die recently. Princess mm. Die was you know, massively in the conscious of the world. Um, 20, I guess, 20 some years ago and, and less so now, but, you know, certainly is, is a pretty significant person in history. How, how are you selecting your subject matter? Cause there's a, there's a lot of, you know, sort of celebrities and others, but yeah. any process oh, there? Princess Dive, for example, I, I did a piece of her like three years ago that I really liked. Um, and she's been on the list. Like I, people that I find are like inspirational. I have on my, like, just on my mind to do and especially after a few years I want to revisit that person to you know see if I can do even a better portrait of them Mm -hmm. which I feel that I did the one that I did a few years ago I really liked but it wasn't as good as this one so I always revisit certain people in history that I find inspiring and just again see if it you know I can lay it down cleaner every time just sharpening the knives you know like really every day I just I'll pick someone and then you know also like to keep a flow of, you know, be it followers or interest in buying art, um, doing high profile people, right? Where yeah. there's a chance it'll get shared by an art page or the person themselves living, obviously. Um, just to drum up business, you know, being a teacher, um, my art commissions is, you know, really how I eat in the Bay Area. It's so expensive around here. So yeah. it's, I keep, um, a flow to my work that people are going to see but then there's you know i'll let weeks go by where i'm just doing like crazy freestyles that 
of no one, mm. you know, which, which is what I love to do. And then I'm like, hmm, maybe I should do a, a recognizable figure that it will draw more people, right? So yeah. I just try to keep a balance with the work. Do you, know what's, do you know what's super interesting? You know, you mentioned that you, you, it's a one shot kind of thing with your, uh, with your palm when you're doing it. Um, and you say, you know, you're hoping to, in some cases, when you do a second portrait, step up the, step up the quality and things like that. Um, how much of like the getting rid of this one because it's not quite accurate is you, because I understand as well as like a creative, we dissect our own work and we break it down and we think about all aspects of it. And we're very judgmental. We're our own worst critics in some way. So how yeah. much of you being like, that's not 100% perfect, is it? And how much is it like the rest of us would be like that? I'm pretty bad. I mean, my, um, my manager, Adam, who's a good friend of mine, I'll send him pieces. He's probably the only one who sees the, and my girlfriend, Ashley, she'll see the ones that don't make it to the front line. And he's like, what are you doing? It's great. I'm like, nope. You know, with portraits, one little thing could be off. You know, it could be such a small detail. And especially because what I do is such small detail. Mm -hmm. it's like ugh, I, I gotta toss it you know and then i'll, I'll reshoot it um like i did dave Grohl from the food fighters uh last week and it took me three times right which hasn't that hasn't happened in years yeah. i did one it looked like <laughs> i told my buddy adam it looked like Pee Wee herman's like mugshot <laughs> it was crazy like it did i like saw it when i stand i'm like what like what was on my hand did not come out on the paper and i'm like looking at my hand in the paper i'm like well, that's a scrap, right? And then I did another one of them in color. Stamped really well, but just something was off. It looked like mm. it could be his like cousin or something, but not him. <laughs> uh, so I did it the next day, right? I did it three days straight, boom, 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 until I got it, which, and then, you know, interesting enough, there was um, a buyer that I had for a Dave Grohl piece that I've already done that I just can't find. I have no idea where it's at. So I reshot the Dave Grohl because I have a buyer lined up. And then when I stamped it, she loved it. But I didn't stamp the tips of my fingers. I did the piece like to my like halfway through the finger, second knuckle, and yeah. then she didn't she didn't want to buy it because my whole hand wasn't stamped. Uh, Even though the tips of my finger was there was no image on it. I'm like okay, and then the gallery had asked if I would do another one. I'm like no. <laughs> I'm like I, I've, it took me three times to do this one. I, I can't. I can't. Yeah. yeah. How long, how long so, does it take you to do one one version of it? Um, I can do. The fastest I've done is 45 minutes, you know, and then if I can, and what? Sometimes, yeah, and sometimes I'll take like three hours if I want to get like super detailed. I did a project years ago in um, New York for the um, Global Citizen Network, a big concert in um, Central Park, mm -hmm. and they had flown me out there to do some work. Uh, Chris Martin, actually, from Coldplay is their creative director, and they flew me out there. I had to do Nelson Mandela, and I had a certain, I had a certain amount of time. And I had a 45 minute slot. So at that time they were taking like an hour and a half. So I had to practice. Um, I just had to keep practicing. Shout out to my roommate Monty because he let me practice on his hand because I was practicing. I had to paint on like other people's hands, which I had never done before. So I got it down to like 45 minutes to do like a pretty, pretty um, decent painting of Nelson Mandela. So um, yeah, 45 minutes I can get it done, but an hour and a half is like the slot of time I like to put aside. Um, yeah. And then if I do like layer work, um, things on top of the face, I'll just kind of freestyle stuff. Like I said, I'll just go for hours, just making stuff up, pulling up images, adding stuff on the face just for fun. So. I was, I was before, gonna, before you, I just want to tell um, any audience that's watching, we're gonna we're gonna pull up some of Russell's stuff here in a minute, but I'm just gonna talk through it a little bit more. Yeah. I had a question. Um, uh, in in terms of, um, you mentioned that you were commissioned to do a Nelson Mandela, no? Uh, I, I want to ask you because something, a, a vibe maybe that I got from your work, especially um, more a couple of years ago when I first started following you, it felt like a lot of your pieces had um, a lot to do with like Native American kind of influence. And um, not to mention that there was a, a bunch of, I guess, uh, uh, people of color within your art in terms of uh, from loads of different races and nationalities and things like that. And also different celebrities of color as well that I think um, have big, big parts from of work that I've seen of yours. Um, what draws your interest to that? Do you, do you find that the, the, the black and white art works better with, with people of color? Do you find that you have interest within the Native American stuff? What, what, what was that? Yeah, I mean, interest in all cultures really. And when yeah. I started 
when I started Pangean, right? So my page is Pangean Studios. Pangean, you know, Pangea, the supercontinent millions of years ago, um, when we were all one people, right? Like one yeah. block, one block yeah. of land. So that was the whole concept is when I started the page, it was going to be a clothing company, really. I had no, I wasn't even doing hand stamping then. I wasn't even painting, really. I was doing some oil paintings here and there, mm. but I, I really had a, I wanted an idea to do a clothing company where um, I was going to be doing paintings and working with like, people all over the world right mm -hmm. to like sell this clothing and like raise money was, i had all these like different ideas no money to back it just just an idea that's where pangean came from like we're all pangean we're all one people and then yeah and that's i've always been just interested in you know uh you know you can't travel everywhere i can't see everything right we're working yeah. or, gr or grinding it out so i do it through my art right i look through photos uh work with photographers and just like look through their images and pull music that I find inspiring. And like, it was just kind of like this natural, it just started flowing that way. There was no real thought behind it other than I want to go see all these people. I want to go to see all these places. Um, yeah. and I can't, I mean, I could, but I can't, right. I devoted myself to this job and this area. And um, yeah, there's so much beauty out there, like to paint. I mean, I, I'm so fortunate, you know, and doing what I do at this time, right. Had I done this process, 15 years ago, right? Without um, proper social media and to share it, no one would have seen my work. I wouldn't be as mm. successful as I am because I have this platform on social media, which is a gift, right? As much as it's it drives people crazy, it's also a gift for artists. And, um, yeah. and, and, and with like having the internet, I can search all these images, beautiful images and paint all day long, which I, I do. <laughs> I'm not teaching, mm. like when I get off here, I'll probably paint until you know, the sun goes down. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's no, nothing more than just wanting to like, see more cultures as much as i can right and for me it's my art that's how i can try and connect with it that's um, amazing yeah and i get to like uh you know i donate pieces to like certain foundations any foundation really hit, hit me yeah. up yeah. i have so much artwork i'm always happy to donate or anything really yeah. um so yeah Dude, the, whole, the foundation of homie and the dude is a foundation of like <laughs> very interested in artwork <laughs> i was just saying like, we're going to support local artists <laughs> i um, got you guys <laughs> no no dude i think i think that's awesome i think also like to me it really stood out as a style that i really appreciate and i felt like you were get it interestingly from also reading your comments over the years it feels like you've given um, a, a lot of black people like a voice to speak about art and things like that and things that I've read in your comments have been really beautiful and I think I very much enjoyed that aspect of your work throughout the years um, and something else is you know you, you mentioned your influence with music and whatnot and you mentioned a couple of musicians that you've done um, is that are, are you you know you said you choose people that are like might be uh, people that you can get some like buzz off of yeah. and like I Traffic, mean yeah. uh, that that's as as a businessman you have to um, yeah. how much of those are like people that you're loving their music and you're vibing to like every day as well? I, I've, I've yet to paint anyone where I don't enjoy their music, right? I won't just mm -hmm. do it just to like, <laughs> just to get some traffic. But I mean, I, yeah. you know, like I did Lady Gaga yesterday. I did an upside down piece on my hand. I haven't posted yet, but the video's up. But like stuff like that, like, I love Lady Gaga, but I mean, I've painted her like five or six times. Like, yeah. do I love her that much? I mean, you know. <laughs> um, I, you know but i do love her but i i'll do certain people that like i know um are gonna help with traffic um but also people like someone like lady gaga has a lot of pictures to work from very high res black and whites where sure. there might be a musician that i really want to do but it's hard to find a great photo right um yeah. like i i've been wanting to do a janice joplin piece lately uh, and i did one years ago and it came out pretty good but it's hard to find super clear images because all the images are older black and whites right so it's stuff like that where if i'll come across just a really sharp that i know will stamp well yeah. um then i'll just go for it if it's someone that you know uh, and it's my favorite artist or not i'll i'll, I'll work with it just because i know it'll and i can pull good music to it which helps line up the artwork so that's kind of i was gonna say do you, do you listen to their music while you do art about I do. them i do oh, that's awesome. cool that's really yeah cool. every, every time really I mean, other art, other music will come out throughout the hour or to three, which, mm. however long I go. But yeah, I definitely listen to their uh, music while I work. That's sure. awesome. That's a great way to do it. I really love that. Yeah. Russell, are they, are they just one-off originals or do you do like lithographs of them or anything like that? Right now we're just doing digital prints. So digital prints. Through, my, through my like email, my bio and Instagram, you can 
get a print of almost any piece. Um, yeah, I just sign prints that are digital. Later on, we're going to be working with different types of prints, but right now they're just digital prints. And then do you also sell the originals if someone wants to buy that? I do. Yeah, all originals are for sale. Um, yeah, the price range is different. You know, I have huge pieces, uh, small, big, you know, single stamp, three, four stamps, so like, you know, six foot pieces with like, you know, 40 stamps. So, Wow. So, dude, I, I wanted to ask a couple of things, obviously, because, uh, you know, you do your amazing, like, wh what I guess I've throughout the years called like a one stamp. And then oh, well. the ones that you uh, collaborate or collate loads of stamps to make a, a amazingly large image. Do you find it more gratifying when you finish a piece that you have perfectly placed each stamp and it's like made a beautiful image? Or do you love the one shots because they're easy, they're fast and, and it's, it's something that works? in a bit of a quicker way for you yeah i like the one shots because i'll just i'll just i just know i can like lose myself there that's all i need to do is finish that one stamp where again like i try and finish a piece every day right it's like a journal entry or a diary entry so if i'm doing a larger piece i'm like looking at the clock i'm racing the clock so sometimes i'll get a little sloppy where i'm trying to make myself like like just wait till tomorrow to finish it. Like what's the rush, you know? But I, I like the idea that it's an entry every day um, as, as much as I can. So when I do the single shot, I can just kind of lose myself in it on the detail, which I love. Um, mm -hmm. But I do, when I finish a large piece, I really enjoy it. So like there's nights where on some of the videos you'll see, I'll take it out back to my art shed and finish it off with like spray paint or just a brush with watercolor. Yeah. Um, and I started doing that because I was like racing to get home to my lady and uh, her son, my stepson, yeah. uh, I would like rush it to get home. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I and I ended up liking that style because it would show negative space where I would just outline it with the brush, the rest of it. Yeah. Because I stamp it, you know, it's a hand stamp. Like it kind of got, it gets a little redundant, like da, 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 da. So I would do some like major parts, with the, hand, the hand stamping. And then, like I said, finish it off with the flow of a brush or some spray paint. And it kind of developed the whole new style, so. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it, it, it's awesome that you're, again, using the multimedium to, to really round out your style is really, really cool as well. And I, I want to ask, in contrast to the single versus multi, I know you do a lot of color versus black and white. Do you have a preference there or is it really whatever fits the piece is your preference in the moment? I, I think the black and whites always stamp a little better. It has like an old black and white photo patina look to it, which That's I really point. like. Yeah. Some of the color ones I've done, and the past stamped really well, but again, it's all about the moisture. Uh, with the color, the way it pulls off my palm, it, it doesn't pop as much as like a deep black on a white paper, right? That pop. And like I said, I like that old patina look, like an old mm. weathered photo, you know? So we posted the, um, so we posted the, the Jimi Hendrix one. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. And then also the, is it Paris Jackson? Is that, is that what yeah. you're? Yeah. yeah. Dude, that, I mean, as far as color ones, I oh, thought that yeah. Was, that was insane as well. Um, we're yeah. we're going to show a couple of them here. And uh, if, if you want to stop or whatever, we'll, we'll just kind of go through and, and have a look. And then maybe you can even have a, a little bit of a walk through um, sure. this, this, your classroom studio as well. Right. Let's have no a look. Problem. So, I mean, like, just, just so people can understand, you know, you have that, that's the Princess Di that you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one behind me. Uh, and like I said, the one to the left of that was. Uh, you could see the Lady Gaga I did. It's upside down, the first one. Yeah. It's like an old photo of her. I haven't posted the still shots yet, but um, yeah, so sometimes I'll do them upside down, like paint upside down, just to, it's like a brain teaser, <laughs> like for myself. And I even wrote a fun little brain teaser after a long day. And then uh -huh. you know, I just I just did some hummingbirds like randomly. So that's yeah. what I mean. Like, I know that's the only piece I'm doing. So I'll just kind of- give, my... give, give us some extra pizzazz with the hummingbirds. Well, wait, that's wait, right. dude, 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 dude. Let's yeah. not, let's not like, let's not underestimate that you're, you're painting that upside down. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's another great point. <laughs> so like, I mean, that's, I guess you're just replicating a picture and you probably flip yeah. it upside down as well. Right. But there's an element of like spatial, like understanding of face and eyes and nose and all that stuff. But oh, yeah. doesn't that get, does that get screwed up a little bit if you're flipping it? No, no. I mean, well, it has. <laughs> it definitely has. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but I've gotten pretty good at that as well. Like I said, I, I like to just like challenge my brain just to try to figure it out. Um, and then, you know, a few, what, year and a half ago, two years ago, I broke my 
left arm, which is the hand I paint on, right? Because I'm right-handed, so the calf is covering. So, like, I taught myself how to paint with my left hand, my like broken arm hand, really? so I could, wow. so I could, so I could paint on my uh, right palm, so I can continue the hand sanding. I mean, you'd have to scroll down a little ways, but there's there's probably you know, twenty pieces that are all done with my left hand, and like a lot of people didn't know that it was with my left hand. I was selling them, and they had no idea it was uh, <laughs> with my left hand. So again, it was it's about like training my brain. So I, you know, train my brain to do it upside down or do it left handed or whatever the case, you know. So yeah. so that's crazy that you train yourself with your left hand uh, to, to to do what you're doing and. Uh, I, I was gonna say, you know, that's that's a crippling injury for someone in your trade. That's a yeah, that's, yeah. That's a, I was that's at a, a friend's. One. I was at a friend's house and uh, fell off a rope swing within the first five minutes of going there. Sorry, Marmar. Sorry, Marmar. Uh, yeah, we know. Uh, was it running on that? Uh, that basically had to learn. Uh, well, well, he he he's always been able to skate both sides very well, but he completely yeah. destroyed his knee and had to properly like make his uh, his primary stance is his opposite stance I'm not surprised with, i'm not surprised with ronnie Moore. He's yeah yeah he's, he's otherworldly yeah. he's otherworldly um do you know I, i'm actually as someone who does like a little bit of filmmaking stuff i actually want to ask you about some of these small clips and the way that you make them are you just yeah. filming like a small time lapse on your hand or just taking like individual photos and bashing them together like when are you editing right. these videos as well so uh every night so <laughs> You're, you're, uh, so, dude, your workload is crazy. <laughs> yeah, and bless my girlfriend's heart. She like, I, I'm forever like, you know, every night, you know, this is what is part of the household. So after I finish a piece, they're all still shots, right? So yeah. uh, there's there's just an app uh, that you pull up, you just select them all and I just do them in order. Um, and I've actually gotten pretty fast at making videos too because I've made so many. So uh, still shot, still shot a few hundred um depending on what kind of piece it is and then i'll just add the music straight to the app and post it um yeah okay. so a lot of people are like i don't get it it's just so it's just me taking pictures you know the only thing that gets tricky <laughs> is some of the videos you'll see when i'm using the spray paint or the brush to like add negative space yeah i'm taking i'm taking pictures with my left while i'm painting with my right like multiple you know my thumb's just going wild while I'm painting. <laughs> yeah. So that gets tricky, but I, I, I enjoy that too, trying to make it flow, you know, with the music. And... Dude, I'm saying, yeah, I'm not nodding my head. I have no idea, like, how the hell you do this. <laughs> like, it's, it's no, I mean, I, I understand, like, how you do it, but, like, the actual, yeah, like, the actual, like, ability to turn. And I like how you just, you run down. Well, this one, you had, like, a little base of, um, of white. Sometimes you yeah. run down from the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I just... Just kind of mess around with different you know ways and styles to try and make it like interesting to the viewer but you know it's it's, it's fun it's a challenge like i said it's just so um and i'll turn my oh, i'll show you when i get up to show you something like i'm gonna do a, oh, oh if you go down um, oh sorry no sorry. no that piece what i was talking about with the brushwork the girl yeah. that's like laying down you can see pull that back up yeah. sorry, there you go yeah right there in the middle of the girl with the sun right yeah I don't know. Yeah, so you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm, I'm taking photos with my left when I'm painting the brush with my right to finish the photo. And this is one too where I was like, I was on look like a time crunch. I'm like, I could either leave it and do all the hand stemming tomorrow, or just try something different. So I just like grab the brush. So I'm you know left hands taking photos, right hands painting. So like both hands are doing something, and I'm trying to get my hand in the shot. <laughs> and, uh, this is crazy, but, dude. But again, it comes out with like a different style. So even though that wasn't the plan, the negative space with the brush, I find it beautiful. And then our hair is all white instead of stamping the hair, you know? So yeah. I just, just a different style, really. Dude, I love it. And, and here, here, here's the thing I wanted to ask you, you know, obviously some of these are built off of loads of stamps. What's the most that you've put on one image? Do, do you know like what the largest amount of hand stamps you put together in one image is? Yeah, I did a piece a few years ago i actually recently sold it um but i did these huge hands black and white hands holding i've reposted a few times we saw a lot of prints of it but that was that was like eight feet tall um by four feet and it was a few hundred stamps for sure really it was huge it's huge yeah um and i would like i want that's one thing i want to start doing is doing larger work where i i'll 
I'll probably still do my daily work, um, but then take time to like start a large piece that may last a year, six months, a year, like where it's like a really large detailed piece, you know? So that's something where like, I'd like to have my own studio so I can leave the piece out hanging, right? Yeah. Where I don't really have that option here. I mean, I could roll it up and put it away and roll it out, which I do for some of my large pieces. But the size I'm talking, I would need like uh, a studio where it would just live because you know, it's going to be really large. So that's kind of the next level I want to take it. It's just doing really large original hand stamping work. Whereas like the one behind me, I took like a stamp and a, an oil mm -hmm. painting. I did like a double exposure and I blow them up. So you can print them. You can print them really large. But I want to do like really large uh, originals, much larger than that. You know. Have you ever considered dude, doing a like um a mural of some sort on someone's like wall if they have like a clean white wall would that be something that you would ever like look into doing for people the the, the way the paint lays down it has to be paper so mm. the only way that would work is if i did it on paper really large and they could either there's different ways to like adhere the paper to the wall mm. or just frame it but um yeah i'd love to do like large pieces in homes for sure that would be dope, man. That would be absolutely yeah. amazing. Um, dude, I'm looking at the one behind you, and mm -hmm. so there's an image of, of a person behind. Is that the is that the oil behind? Walk us through that one. The yeah, one that's yeah. Just, just behind you. Yeah. So this one. Wow. The original. This actually, I'll show you the original stamp. So this is the original stamp. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, that's multiple stamps, obviously. The one yeah. Incredible. Wow. I love that just on her neck. And then I have a really, an oil painting that I really love. Um, it's actually hanging in, at home. <laughs> um, so I just took the photo of the oil painting and, you know, the hand stamp and just did a double exposure. And I'll print them out just to like, I have a lot of those. I have a, quite a collection of those to, now too. And people like buying those as well. They think, and like, I have a print. I do like an enlarged print, um, mm -hmm. like one-offs and I'll sell them. So yeah, it's just a different look. Always just trying to, I'll be sitting at home and wanting to be creative or tinker, but you know, I'm not in my studio. So I'll pull up the app and just pull up photographs or, and just do some double exposures and see if any of them hit. <laughs> Very cool. Dude, do, do you have, um, like you're doing these, these multi dexterous things. Do you like, you know, cook food with one hand and play a little bit of guitar with the other hand and like maybe. No. <laughs> Cooking food, funny story. <laughs> uh, last night I told my girlfriend, I was like, I'll make, I'm going to make dinner tonight. She always cooks. Um, she was working and I'm off this week, you know, we're out for Thanksgiving. So I got all of my stuff and I uh, burnt my finger pretty good there. Oh shit. Oh, oh shit, dude. Jesus. So cooking, so cooking, no, not too much. <laughs> and <laughs> no. I won't, be, I won't be anymore. No, no, a forte, not a forte. Dude, you could do no. the poster, do the next hand stamp poster of like backdraft, you know, the movie that has like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like the flyer. <laughs> yeah. That was no joke, though, man. I, uh, yeah, so it's funny that you brought up cooking. <laughs> Dude, um, go for it, go for it. I was just going to say, I was going to go in a little bit of a di different direction. We talked about your studio and talked about your classroom, but if you got something still in this space, then we can circle back. To that. I was actually going to talk about um, some teaching stuff and ask you about your, your, your opinion on, uh, on some teaching with art, but go for it. Yeah, so this first. is tied to that. So you mentioned that this is your studio, but you can't lay out like bigger pieces. It's also your classroom. Mm -hmm. And um, and we just found out that you know I don't know we're, we must be getting lucky because we have some re like some people that we've had as guests that I feel really grateful for just really 100%. like nice people. So your story is that you went to elementary school at this school. Yes, um, sir. And then when you turned eighteen, you started working at this elementary school, and now you're you're a teacher's assistant plus you teach art and some other bits and pieces here. You've been here yeah, for 20 years, which is crazy. Show, Talk to us I'll a show, little bit about that. I'll show you something real quick. So this picture here in the back of the classroom, that young heartbreaker <laughs> <laughs> is me. And you can see this fence right here. Yeah. Behind the photo. That would be the same fence to my garden wow. my first grade classroom. That's crazy. So yeah. I've been here for a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I attended school here from second grade to eighth grade, did the high school thing, came back, and I started working the after school program, mm -hmm. which was doing a lot of art with the kids, which I loved, obviously. Yeah. 
And here I am. Um, the first grade assistant teacher was leaving and I got along really well with the first grade teacher and they asked me if I wanted to be an assistant teacher. Um, this is a private school, so you don't have to be credentialed. They obviously prefer that, but I had been here so long and they knew me as from a child. Yeah. Uh, they asked me if I wanted to take on that role and I was like, absolutely. And then the art teacher was leaving and they knew that I had a love for art and the kids doing art with the kids. So I took over that role and 20 years later. <laughs> Bam. Um, yeah, I'm very fortunate. So obviously, you know, you, you said to us, you know, that you got your studio and whatnot. And obviously, whoever the, the, the uh, faculty is or whoever you got, you're working with is, is, uh, is doing you a bit of solid. I actually wanted to ask, how much do you think your influence is like someone who is on social media has influenced the amount of children or specifically the children that come to the school or parents knowing that you work there based off of social media and wanting to send their kids to a school where they can learn art from you or, or if their kid is particularly interested in art is that something that happens or not so yeah much? We, yeah we get we get some parents that come through and they're um they're like oh yeah i i know of him or da, 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 da. Mm. i don't i don't post a lot about uh the school or the school name for no real reason other than mm. to keep a bit of privacy yeah um, of course with like the families and kids you know um uh, but yeah, like, yeah, they, some of them do know. And then after the fact that they don't, they get like really excited and, um, the kids love it too. You know, like there'll be extra time in class. And if we're doing like a watercolor, they're like, can I do a hand painting? And I'm like, go for it. You know, it's non-toxic, have at it. So, and I have some, pieces, I have some pieces on my feed where I, I'll, I have the kids do, they'll paint their hand and add to my large pieces. Yeah. Uh, oh, cool. so I, I mean, obviously now with COVID, that magic's been taken away temporarily, I hope. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the yeah, we do get like some interest because, you know, and then when they find out that I'm the art teacher, you're like, oh, I've seen his work online. And they, yeah, you know, I don't think um I don't think they're banging down the door because I'm here or nothing. But every once in a while, you know, you'll get like Amazing. someone. No, yeah, I was gonna say I can imagine like there there would definitely be a, a portion of influence in that way. And uh, something else that I want to ask you, obviously, um, this might be posed more for uh, like university professors or or even like uh, I would say like high school teachers, but it, it's definitely important at a younger age. How much of what you're teaching in your art syllabus allows for like freedom of creativity? Because I remember like as a young kid in my and I, I went to a private school as well actually and. Um, I know that our art teacher was very strict. There was not much room for your own ideas. And there wasn't, there was oh. like, oh, we're doing this. And if you step out of that, then you are not doing good. And, I, and I, it definitely pushed me away from art as a child. I have to admit, mm. it, it, it deterred me from wanting to draw, build, sculpt, whatever, right. you know, whatever medium. So how much of suppression of like art do you think is, is something that happens in schools and something that you try and avoid maybe? Yeah. I mean, unfortunately a lot of art's been taken out of the schools. <laughs> so, mm. um, but I'm, a, I'm very much, I let the kids do their creating. I, I think there's balance, right? I do a lot of directional mm. drawing. I'm self-taught. I never, I haven't taken an art class since, um, well, I took one in high school and that was an interesting one talk about interesting teacher but like i'm self-taught so i teach the kids the way my brain works right um breaking everything down into shapes and seeing shapes inside of everything mm. but you know like again balance half the time like they're i could do something and they they can do a free form of what i'm doing or they have time to do their own creative work uh when it rains you know and there's big puddles outside we uh, i do like i do called puddle painting so i take the kids outside like we set up paper and they're they use the puddle water to like paint something mm -hmm. we created here at the school. Wow. Uh, so we, we do a lot of like free form art. Like it's, it should just be fun, you know? And you know, I'm still learning too, right? Like the teacher that I am today, I would, you know, better than the, the one last year and next year will be better than the one this year. Like we're all growing, right? So there's been times where I've tried to do a project with like a kindergarten class. that's probably like geared for like second or third grade because <laughs> I try and challenge them, right? And yeah. you get the kid like kind of breaking down. You're like, ooh, you pull that back. So like, <laughs> and that was a long time ago. But you know, we're all, we, you know, learning as I go. But um, no, we, we have a lot of fun in my art class. And it's, I let them definitely just be creative and abstract as they want, you know, and, and there's no wrong way to do it. If I do it one way, I always say everything's different, blah, 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 depending on what we're drawing. Mm. But yeah, I definitely don't stifle their creativity at all. You know, um, and I get kids coming back, you know, to come visit me here on campus that are, you know, out of college. 
which shows how long I've been doing this. That I taught, <laughs> I taught, and they're like, you know, we still keep in contact, you know. Um, so yeah, I think I'm making sure they're having a good time. That's awesome. That's I would just that's freaking sick, man. And I would think as well, like, if I was a kid and I was in your class and I saw the picture of you in the exact same class, you know, at my <laughs> age, then like, there's definitely a deeper connection there. Like, you know, yeah. first of all, kids look at teachers for better or worse as, as aliens almost as aliens as untouchables right as just like <laughs> this 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 entity that is all-knowing and all-powerful and to right. some degree teachers you know need to kind of keep that message going but but there's also real value in just breaking that down and just being like really approachable and really yeah. you know likable <clears throat> right. and I'm, I'm i get a sense that that's you you know that you're you know you're letting them I go splash out in puddles and oh yeah <laughs> I sure try. <laughs> it's it's important yeah. as well, and like it, it, it's crazy because I, like like I said, you know, it, things like teachers, uh, you know, putting influence in on children's work and whatnot can, in some ways, like for me, deter them from doing art and other things. And uh, I actually wanted to ask you as well because you you said you haven't retaken really an art class. Uh, since high school i was going to say you know obviously with university and people when they go to art schools and whatnot like how can one subjectively like grade art like it, it's it, it's a very like i don't really understand that as someone on the outside i find i can understand cool you're a teacher and you might go cool i'm going to be very objective about this piece and think about it in these terms but are those terms objective even you know so i, I start to like question some, right. some deeper thoughts in that so uh, how, how do you feel about that whole world of like a grading art and like giving kids uh, degrees for art i hmm, that's a tricky one i've always said like like i'm an artist right like that's just the way it is but like yeah i've been around other artists and i've seen how people judge and critique artists who aren't themselves very talented Mm. And it just it just rubs me the wrong way i have a very hard time with it <laughs> like i really do yeah. um unless you can do it better take a seat you know nice. um, because i've seen people like really like art critics who like they can't paint a circle right and they have such harsh words for this and that who are putting themselves out there mm. um and i've had people run their mouth about my work you know online you get trolls yeah. and whatnot and i'm like damn like unless you can do it better yes. You know, painting on my hand upside down, you know, like people just, people like to just see <laughs> But yeah, the whole art world, even, you know, and I don't know that world to speak on too much because I didn't go to any kind of art school, but I'd imagine it's pretty difficult for an artist to be at their own style or even going down a style that's already there. If you're not top of the class or if you're not, if you don't get your name out there, it could be, you know, it could get down sometimes, I'm sure. Yeah, um, I've, I've been very fortunate where I fell into this lane that hadn't yeah. been created before. But um, I don't know. I, had I not done the hand stamping, I mean, I love my oil paintings, but you know, I, there's a world of people better than I am. So yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky if you're just a sole artist and that's your only source of income. It's got to be difficult um, because yeah. it's a huge art world out there, and there's a you know there's a number of people who like, they just have these big names and it doesn't really matter what gets put on the canvas. It's their name that they're, you know, people are buying, um, mm -hmm. whether it's, there could be someone in, and there are someone in their bedroom doing paintings that master style, right. Or they have, you know, less than a thousand followers. No one buys their art, but they're top of the top of the top as far as skill level. So it's a tricky world. <laughs> it's, it, it's really, crazy. It really... I talked to my wife, my wife's a chef. And she, oh, watches, nice. she watches some of the cooking shows. And like the judges on the cooking shows are food critics. Yeah. I can't get over it, man. It's like, dude, first of all, your taste, like your, 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 you know, your palate is different mm -hmm. than everyone else's. So what right. you say is too salty or what you say is beautiful or whatever is definitely different. Like everyone is subjective in that. But also, where is your point of reference, bro? Like you, <laughs> you don't have a point of reference. So how, what makes you the expert to judge to actually right. lay down like some sort of like, you yeah. know, yes or no to someone's, yeah. you know, passion or something like that. And, I'm, and it's the same with art. It's, it's a, it's a yeah. weird thing. And it feels like it's a little bit political as well. You know, like who are you yeah. friends with and who aren't you? It, it oh feels, yeah. Feels though like, I, I don't know, for me as, as a, as a kid who grew up pre-social media predominantly, 
and has now lived through the inception of hard social media to now where kids are being born into it. Right. I would say it's been a positive and a negative for a lot of people. And I would say that the whole, like, like you said, I, I love the idea that you said, you know, that there's people out there with, you know, 100,000 followers, you know, or, or, you know, who in some cases aren't doing much, you know, and then right. there's other people who, like you said, have 1,000, 100 followers, you know, who are doing crazy stuff. You know, I'll, I'll put this out there. Currently, us as Homie and the Dude, I'd say we make, in my opinion, some bloody good content. We have some pretty right. amazing guests oh, on the show. Thanks, sir. <laughs> and, you know, we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're floating around with the, with the small sharks at the moment. We're looking up at right. the great whites ready to come join them. But, I, right. like, the, the truth is, you know, it, it's this weird system where, yeah, there's going to be haters because there's always haters with social media. The moment you give someone a voice without them being in front of you, it completely changes all that kind of stuff. So I think judging someone's art, like you said, is, is, is a weird one. But I would say the amount of critics, it feels like to me, the amount of critics that don't actually partake in the art oh, form feels absolutely. like it's diminishing a little bit more. Though. Yeah, I would say throughout the year. So I would say there's the people who are judgy online. You who are like, like, actual, like the, the professional. Yes, I was going to say the professional, right. the, the, the food writers, the, the okay. uh, art critics. It feels like at least for me in the generations I lived through, it felt like people could get away with it more back then because no one is going, hey, well, you cook a fucking meal then and, and, and impress me because right. like, that's how it should be. It's not that at all. It feels like now more days because of social media and more people are going, hey, well, you label yourself as a food critic in your bio and you're critiquing all this food. Like, do you cook? You never post any food that you cook, you know? And it's right. like, I think interestingly, the social media has weeded okay. that out in some ways, okay. but also allows for the casual judger, the, the, the casual who comes into anything for me and Tom, for example, we're big fans of mixed martial arts. Um, nice. When you see the Conor McGregor um, fans all over the internet who maybe have never really watched the sport, but have, found a an amazing sports athlete to support which i think right. is awesome and you're coming and you're paying for my sport to keep happening so that's great um <laughs> but you might not be someone who can make strong judgments within the field because you haven't spent years studying working right. or uh, or yeah. understanding it so it's a, it's a really weird balance to also listen to some of those voices and to not listen to some of those voices as well. I, the thing i would say about is, is, is well with your hands nothing if there's no one that knows and can comment on your your specific lane better than you. you. Would, like you, would, you, you know would when think. you've done something right. You know <laughs> you when you've think. done something that's shitty, right? right? Like oh yeah. Like at some point, are you like, how the fuck do they even like <laughs> have the I've, guts? At first, at first, when I a, a few art pages um, shared my work and I got a little influx of followers, and then um, a Facebook page, uh, Board Panda, they did like a, a compilation of my videos which went viral was huge. You got a lot of views and the, the comments that I saw all over the world. <laughs> and then, you know, I was new to it and um, I would read through some of them. I'm like, damn, like, <laughs> like, up. like people are nasty, really like talking shit about me being a teacher. I uh, must be a horrible teacher if I spend this much time painting, obviously not knowing how fast I paint or anything, right? It's just ridiculous stuff. And I'm like, I had to stop and like, cause I, you know, I'm, I'm nice Mr. Russell, but I can be a hard ass too. Right. So I was like, I need to just like, let it go because I was getting mad, you know, like, cause we're all human and uh, it affects you. And I still, um, one, not that long ago, ran their mouth on Instagram, um, about a painting that I shared. Um, and the woman that's like, has her arms out and there's like wings, you can see her breasts and the, yeah. and the, and the shadows. And she was just running her mouth like that. I, I, I I let my children view this work and how what of a shitty person I am and I'm like damn like first of all my students don't see any of the work that's new you know obviously and um but she, you know she doesn't know that mm. I, and I actually had a comment back to it I, I never comment when people run their mouth um and most the most people are fantastic and great comments really kind comments but this this woman na <laughs> nasty woman um ran her mouth and I was just like look I was like, I don't know where you're coming from I'm like I, my children do not see this work I took that photo you know on the weekend no one's here oh, <laughs> okay. oh it's like oh I didn't know I didn't realize I'm like then why are you commenting like why are you speaking out of turn like you don't even know what you're talking about and you're gonna be like that unkind um 
to a teacher and say that I'm being inappropriate with my children. I was like, that's fucked up. Like I was, I was hot. <laughs> I was so mad. Yeah. Like that's what essentially she's doing is saying like, I'm, a, I'm being inappropriate with my children. Mm. And there's a, there's a, that's one thing. Like when people comment about my teaching or my show, my students, I get really upset. <laughs> well, we, um, we, we've made a similar, like we've actually made a rule, like with people that, um, that comment on some of the stuff that we're posting and we've broken it a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've addressed things during live streams. And stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But really like we, we try to, we try to stay away from it because there's no, yeah. like, I mean, you, you, you want to read bits that if it's fair criticism, then you can learn from yeah. it. Right. Absolutely. And, and that's Absolutely. fair game. But someone that's just um, being negative for no other reason than they're probably bored and maybe just unhappy, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's a bummer. I mean, that's a bummer for them, and that's a bummer for you. Yeah. And but it's it, for us, like the energy of even reading that is probably not, know. not good energy. I know, and I usually just turn away from it. But like I said, when it involves my kids, and um, if I'm being appropriate or not, it's like, you know, it's not okay. And um, and if if it were true criticism, like you could always direct message me right if you really want to have a conversation if you're really like curious like mm. hey like and because she said she's like you know i've loved your work forever my daughter follows your work we're both unfollowing you and i was like well, you know okay ouch whatever you know but it's like if you really <laughs> had concerns you could message me and we could have it back and forth like but to like throw those words up you know my comments for people to see it's like damn like and then again she like once I told her my students don't see it, they weren't there for that photo. She's like, oh, oh, I didn't realize that. And I'm like, all you should be saying is you're sorry, you know, like, which would be fine too. Like if you make a mistake, like we, like I teach my children, you know, like you just apologize for it, you own it and move on. But she couldn't do that. You know, she was so like, like most people are, they can't backtrack. Once they've like done something, they just end of the fire with it. It's like, it's okay to just be like, look, I was wrong. You know, I, I shouldn't have said that because she basically said it without saying it. I'm like, did you just say you're sorry? You were wrong, you know? Yeah. It's, it's like, I'm, I'm following anyway. I was like, okay. I was like, good luck to you. I, I, yeah. I mean, here, here's, the, here's the thing that I also like throw out there is, and I guess it's a good question to you. Uh, as a whole, there's pros and cons to social media. And you said, you know, as artists, you know, you mentioned earlier, you're very lucky to have the exposure that you've had on social media. Mm -hmm. um, we actually spoke to someone the other day um, who was like uh, much more against social media and was less interested and less down with it. And, and um, we've definitely had a big contrast. There are a lot of the creatives that we spoke to. We've had some that are like, social media is great. It's helped me. And others have been like, I cannot deal with all of that. It's too much. So um, I guess as a whole, do you find it as a whole, as a positive experience for you in, in your day-to-day -day life? And also as part of, I guess now your job, yeah, I mean, look, it's easy to like start looking at it with judging eyes after the fact, but like it helps me eat like plain and simple. Like this is how I make money. Yeah. <laughs> so there's times I'm like, oh, it's bullshit, you know, and like, and then, you know, Instagram has this algorithm now that like I, it's beyond me, you know, like when I, like months and, you know, got like six months ago, I would post something and it would get like a lot of attention. Like, whereas now I'll post a video that I think is one of my strongest pieces. And I get like, and even currently I'm getting like less than 1% of my followers are even seeing my work. Really? And it has some, it has something to do with the algorithm. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. I'm getting less than 1% for like months now, which is, it is what it is. And nothing I can do about it. It's something to do with the way they're um, identifying my video as like an ad, as opposed to like art, something mm -hmm. about it nothing i can do about it and like that's frustrating but at the same time it's like well oh well you know something changed in their platform that affects me but without the platform in the first place i wouldn't even have the followers which in turn is you know clients and money so i mean there's days where it's frustrating you know social media in general but again i have to look at it's been a huge gift for me i mean again living in the bay area solely as a teacher yeah. my girlfriend's my girlfriend's a teacher um, we don't make a lot of money teaching. That's just the way it goes, right? And the artwork is a huge supplement and it's because of the social media platform. So, whereas I'm sure some people are like, Meh. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I love you social media. I mean, it's just the way it is. What, do you, what, do you, uh, what is, what's inspiring you these days? Whether it art world or, or wherever, what are you excited about when you see it? Uh, there's a, 
oil painting is for me. I, I, and I follow, uh, you know, a handful of pages um, on more than that, you know, probably 20 or 30 like art sharing pages, like oil painting inspires me. And um, that's what I'm trying to like, also spend more time on is um, getting a lot of oil painting in uh, portrait work, emotion, people. Um, for a while, it was the times, right, um, that we're in, especially in the States. Mm -hmm. um, but that got, that started to burn me down too. I mean, it's, there, it's, um, I was doing pieces that really like was moving through me and what I was seeing and stuff, but it, it gets tough. I mean, it's been a shit show over here, as you know. <laughs> um, so I had to, let, I had to, I had to lay that down for a little bit because like just a lot of pain in the work, you know, with what's going on in, in our, in our country, uh, how people are being treated. And I was trying to like reflect that in my art, which I still do. And I will, mm. but it was, it was getting heavy. Like every is depressing, you know, like, so I had to just I'm taking a break and just like freestyling pieces just for fun. I'm trying to like have fun <laughs> here at the end of the year because it's been a tough year, you know? Yeah. Um, for everyone but over here my goodness yeah, yeah dude it's it's a balance isn't it like to yeah. do stuff that you care really really deeply about yeah. you can go into some places that you know there's some residual carryover right yeah and that, can, that can affect you in, in ways outside of your space outside of your art and right. then there's this other argument of like i just want to do something that just is fun something that's light you know it's almost exactly. like a movie interest i want a movie that's gonna yeah exactly it's gonna move me that's gonna make me cry it's gonna make me laugh and then other days dude i just want to see some shit blowing up that's all yeah. I care, you know? <laughs> right yeah I, I think that's exactly how it is so yeah again i think everything is about balance so there are days where i wake up and i'll be driving into work and i'll hear a song um and it'll just move me in a certain direction i mean it's all about the music honestly i the correlation is crazy i i've never even created a piece without listening to music ever yeah. um wow. I, i've done a few pieces on airplanes actually i wasn't listening to music but um everything is about the music so whatever i listen to on the way to work and it's on shuffle <laughs> will like guide me almost i'm like i'll start like thinking 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 you know and then i my school day starts and um the wheels are turning and then i'll boom i'll have my first break and i'll start my first stamp mm. wipe it off teach 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 school day ends and i'll usually finish the work in the afternoon but um it could just be a song that directs me wherever that day goes. And I never have, I never have a plan um, ever. Like I don't, unless it's a commission piece, right? Where people have sent me um, yeah. photos to work off every day. I just, mm -hmm. which is exciting. There's never a plan. And then um, by the end of the day, you know, come usually by 7.30, I'm out there taking the final photos of uh, the finished piece, be it a big one or a small one. So yeah, it's fun. Thanks for watching this episode. We really appreciate you supporting Homie and the Dude. Please hit us with the Holy Trinity, like our Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and follow us on Instagram. Just search at Homie and the Dude. It all really helps. So you do, you do, a, little, you do a little bit during first break. Mm -hmm. You start the hand. So, and then you'll press that one down? Yeah, sometimes I... Like, there are days where I'll do a single shot where I'll start on my lunch break. And then I'll just teach in the afternoon with it on my hand. <laughs> just don't touch anything, right? Because like, yeah. um, or I'll do like a piece of a large one and stamp it on my lunch break, you know, and then wipe it away and then go teach and finish in the afternoon. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Do you know what? Uh, you, you mentioned a, a couple of things. And one really resonates with me, Russell, is, uh, is music. So uh, as a kid, when I, uh, when I grew up, I'm, so I'm quite heavily dyslexic and... Mm. I really struggled with in in the UK. We um, the schooling system is a little bit different, and we get tested at the ages of 15 and 16 um, through what are called GCSEs, and um, they're like an examination process to then take you to the next step, which is from 16 to 18 before university, basically. Okay. And um, I really struggled. Um, uh, what we call revising, like studying, uh, learning my content for those examinations. And I found out a big part of my process, whether it be writing, studying, um, skateboarding, creative work in many ways is editing. always editing. Yeah. Even when I'm editing, yeah, when I'm listening, I still listen to music and it, it, I ended up going into um, 
a couple of my exams with music and I was allowed to listen to music in my examinations. And I think there's something so, so powerful about the way that music is um, connected with us. And I find for me personally, I'm, I feel a lot more connection to older music, specifically mm -hmm. things between the like 50s and like 90s are kind of my like big range. And I think, yeah, uh, one song can change a day. One, one line can change a mood. One guitar riff can make you feel like an absolute god for five minutes. You know, Absolutely. It, it's, <laughs> Absolutely. I think it's so underrated, the power of music and the influence yeah. it has. And I fully agree with that, dude. I think in my yeah. life, it's been one of the most amazing and, and beautiful things that I've had available to me has been things like Spotify, things like an iPod, um, and, and technologies that have been created where I have a, a massive music that exists that I can go through at any point and, and right. have access to. So I'm very thankful for that as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy. I mean, there's times where often at the end of the day, um, end of the evening, late evening, I'm exhausted. I'm just like done, but I'm like <laughs> not finished with the piece and I'll turn a certain song on and my energy level just goes out the roof, right? It's yeah. temporary because <laughs> I'll get tired again, but like it really does. And I have a few songs that like, I know if I hit it, I turn it up, I'll power through a piece. And um, but then it's like in my head, I go home and I'm like, I need to use this music for the piece because that's what like finished it off. That was like drove yeah. it home. So yeah, music is, I, anytime I talk about my artwork with anyone, it's, it's, it's always a point, of, a point to be made. It's the music, it's the music, it's the music. Um, you know such what's a weird? Condition. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, no, no, that was it. That was it. Well, I was just going to say, like, the, the whole music thing is is strange because, I mean, if you we really strip it back, we're you know we're humans, and like if it, like you're, I, I have the same thing. Like when I'm working out, if there's a certain, if I'm not feeling mm -hmm. great, right. and I put a track on, it generates energy in me, right? Yep. But so so there's chemicals inside my body that mm -hmm. are doing whatever they're doing, and they're low level. And then you turn on something that has sounds like, the you know, frequencies sound, both. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And so those sounds are put together, manufactured together, mm -hmm. right? To create something that it's almost like magic, dude. It's I was just going like to say, I was just going to say it, it's magic. You took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, we're so used to it, right? Since children, we listen to music. It's part of our lives, but it's absolute magic. <laughs> like there's no other word for it. I mean, the way it makes you feel, the frequency, the vibrations you can get from it are, that's magic. Also, I would, I would throw out there as well, you know, it, it, and something that we're all missing during this coronavirus time, unless you're happening to be in places like New Zealand, Vietnam, or Korea, you yeah, know, where, where, right. where they're not having many issues, is I'm not sure, Russell, how many like music festivals you've been to or like big open air like gigs you've been to, but here in the UK, it. festivals are like our whole summer, like especially yeah. for people from 15 to like, <laughs> I was gonna say like 50, 60 in some cases. Like we have Glastonbury Festival and like all the big yeah. ones happen in the UK. Yeah. And there's something about being in a crowd of yeah. a hundred thousand people and you're listening yeah. to music that you all love. And like you say, you can feel the vibrations from the bass in the ground in your heart. You can feel the person next to you on every side of you. And it's yeah. like there's this unity as humans that we get both. Uh, in in listening to music and being in that space with people and i think you know your, your whole point of it, it can pick you up it can change and uh, dude it's as mundane as you could walk downstairs and i i know that on a saturday morning or, or a sunday morning if i've got to do some hoovering or some vacuuming around the house that is going to be so much easier <laughs> if i've got music that i'm bit bopping right. around to i'm doing right. like my movements yeah. to the tune yeah. you know? It's your dance partner movie. at that point. <laughs> exactly. And it, it just allows for this, this, I don't know, it unlocks something. When someone says to me, I don't like music, I look at that person because I've met one or two in my life and I'm so confused and baffled by them every yeah. single time. I'm like, you mean you don't understand music? That's what you're trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't understand what music can do. Uh, but you know, here's the other thing. Like, I think art is a similar, similar thing. Maybe not, you know, because art gives it to you in a, in a very... Um, immediate so when you see something that you connect with it's very yeah. instantaneous it's right visual, and it hits, visual, yeah. It hit, yeah it hits a part of your brain that's very different than logic and words and all of that it's just it's a it's a visual connection um but and, and i think your work is very much like that like if someone's scrolling your page certainly my experience dude was very instantaneous it was just like this, this is fucking awesome this is like genius not Thank just you. not just the 
the, the process of hand stamping, but the quality of your painting, mm. the quality of seeing it on a hand and, and how it transfers onto a, a, you know, a piece of canvas is crazy. And I think a lot, you know, it's, it's a similar experience to music. There's, a, there's an unspoken message delivered from something not so like it's on a computer. So it's not even like in the same room as me. It's virtual across the world. And I see it yeah. and feel something like it, yeah. make, it makes the chemicals in me change. Right. So where is a similar, you know, similar, it's similar, isn't it? It's, yeah. But, it's yeah. So where I put it, the chemicals in it change. <laughs> love it. That's true, though. It's crazy. I, you know, about the music, there's times where I'll have families commission me to do uh, portraits of their kids, right? And then I'm like, I always, I always make a video to the, for whatever piece I'm working on. I'm like, what, is there a song you'd like that's special to you or with your kids? And they're like, Mm, you can pick anything. I don't, we don't really listen to a lot of music. I'm always baffled. Like it's happened multiple times. I'm like, okay. You know, but in, <laughs> back in my head, I'm like, really? Like there's not a song during your pregnancy or during the childhood or you and your husband, like a wedding song, anything. They're just like, yeah, no, whatever you want. I'm like, all right. right. Oh, you're like, <laughs> Hendrix it is. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Getting some Hendrix you have, you have, you asked for it, right? Um, no, I, I think that's great, dude. I think, you know, it, I love I love as well that you make it, because uh, honestly, um, in, in, in my entire experience, I, I didn't realize how much of your work you, you were doing for commissions and things like that. Um, it's really awesome that you make it a really personal experience. We talked to a, um, a tattoo artist um, on our last podcast, and he spoke about, um, he does like large, um, typically like full body or like chest and like stomach, back, full arm, full leg. Like he's doing large black work, basically. Yeah. A big part of his process is he makes you book two full days with him. The first one is entirely for design and getting to know mm -hmm. each other. Um, and I said, you know, I said to him as well, I love that it's a personal thing. And I right. love that there's an aspect of you going on top of what's the subject matter that you want. What's something that you guys like listening to that I can make a video with it for? Or what's something that correlates specifically musically to what I'm doing? Right. It makes yeah. it so much more personal. And for you as well, it allows you to dive deeper into your basket of emotions as an artist when you're painting. Absolutely. And I'll listen to that song, right? When they tell me the song they want, I'll listen to it while I'm painting. And it helps me line up at the end, like how the music lays down for the video, for the reveal and whatnot. So it's always the music and it's so important. Um, and I am also, sh it's shocking when people just don't have a connection with music or, and they, and they could though, I always want to be like, you should go listen to music now more, <laughs> yeah. go find your love for it. Um, but yeah, everyone's so different, but yeah. So Russell, I, I'm looking through our comments, by the way, we've had loads of people tuning in. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Loads of people saying that you're amazing in the chat and that you're an incredible artist and loving you. Um, Thanks gang. We had, uh, we had um, let me just check his name. We had Mike Sullivan say that you actually <laughs> are a skateboarder. And, uh, and I, want, I want to ask you a question in terms of music and skating, because something that's- Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> something that's super important to me is when I film a skate park or even watching some of my favorite skate parks, for example, you talk about like, um, oh God, like uh, the boss, what's his, what's his bloody name? Um, Oh my God, I can't even remember. The guy who owns Baker Skateboards, I can't remember. Andrew Reynolds, Andrew Reynolds. Thank you. Andrew Reynolds um, did a part years ago that was set to cream white wall. And, yeah. Uh, white room even. And white, it, yeah. It's just amazing. Like the music is what makes that part. And to me, I'm a big, big fan of how much music can contribute to other art as well. So um, the fact that I, I love that you were like, I like to make a video afterwards with the music because again it gives that other level of depth and kind of uh, beauty to it as well uh, so yeah. I, I want to ask do, do you like uh, i hear you're a skater do you have any uh, any skaters that you're or parts that you're a fan of or anything like that who's your go-to oh movie? my oh my goodness there's so many there's so many <laughs> I, i'm always i'm blown away i mean there's so many recently though what i've been like uh, who i love is day one song i mean i'd oh. follow you know on his instagram like how much fun he has on a skateboard yeah, and his age, you know, he's not a young man. He's not old, but he's not a young man. And like the creativity he has and how good he is. I'm just like, and of course he's huge. Like he's very well known, but lately just watching him online, I just have such a blast, you know, um, Shane O'Neill lately is nuts. I mean, obviously Nigel Houston's like 
robotic with their skating. It's just like, <laughs> of course, <laughs> like it's like effortless. I'm like, what? Um, <laughs> and we still skate, right? But I'm older, and I mean, I I skated last weekend. I my board to my car. I really enjoy it, but you know, the crazy um, trying to get crazy. Those days are over, right? Um, yeah. But that just just riding a skateboard, the feel of just rolling down the sidewalk. And that sound as um, it's therapeutic. I mean, that was my therapy before the artwork, you know. And this is like skateboarding and art. It's like free therapy. Um, so when I can, when I can, I like to get out and skate. But um, these old bones, my friends, these <laughs> old bones. The ground shakes when I fall too. So before, oh, boy. <laughs> before you ask your question, Careful. I just want to comment. While you were talking about that, while you're saying, you know, riding on the board and the sound of the board across. I just was watching you through the screen and you just had this like, it was almost like, oh, <laughs> moment. It's, it's so true, man. Like, <laughs> I, that's the thing. It's, it's weird. So I'm, I don't do like, I don't paint. I don't play any instruments. I, I write a decent amount. I do a lot of writing and I, I'm finding more of my passions as I, as I grow up. But skating has been the one consistent constant right. in my entire life. Same like, with me. Oh. it started when I was eight years old and I've had breaks from it. I've had, you know, months off, days off, weeks off, years off in some cases, but yeah, yeah, me too. It still remains. It still comes back. And like you said, again, for me, I think, uh, you know, uh, me and Tom talk about something we call the flow state, you know, when you're in that moment that is just pure, oh. there's nothing else. Oh, yeah. You're just in the moment. Yep. Um, I would say for me that only one of the few times I exist is riding a skateboard with music on in my headphones. Oh, yeah. There's oh, yeah. so few things that exist on this planet that allow you to reach a level of freedom. And, and there's a reason why, you know, that trending video of the guy riding the, the yeah, skateboard, yeah. drinking the dog, Kool-Aid dog, and dog, listening dog, to Stevie yeah. Nicks. Yeah. Like that has gone viral. And it's because every skater is like, I have done that. Every yeah. skater is like, that is me at some point. I know, yeah. I feel that like 100%. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna have to do a handstand with that guy. Was his yeah. dog, dog <laughs> face? I think. What's his Instagram? I forget. Yeah, that's that a great video. Have that's you thought about video. stamping any boards? Have you thought about doing any art on any boards or anything? Um, it really needs to be paper. I've worked with, um, I'm, we started, a friend of mine owns a skate shop out here and they print their own boards. And I was supposed to do a series of like three different images to start printing on skateboards. This is like right before COVID and then COVID happened and they like, so that's on pause, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna be doing handstamp work and it'll be transferred to the board for sure. Oh, I need to look forward to that. Talking about crazy art on Birthday boards. Present. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Something that really is underrated is the art within the skateboarding world. Like the artists oh, yeah. who are making the skateboards art. <sighs> Ridiculous. Like I've been DGK have just come out with this Japanese series that blew my in mind. I was like, there's yeah. no way. Like there's so many companies. And again, something that I'm really loving is, for example, uh, I saw Primitive. I think maybe a year ago hired a artist called Paul Jackson, who did a amazing piece for them. He has this really abstract style where he does loads of pointillism and almost like oh. looks like he runs like static through his images okay. that are a little bit distorted. Yeah. And I was like, I love that skateboarders and skate companies are now looking to big artists or social media artists to then give them some art for their boards rather than just finding like their core, like I would say element typically throughout the years have had amazing art, but also they stick with a very core kind of style in a lot of yeah. graphics. It's, it's been a dream of mine to like work with a skateboard company. I have a few friends who are pro. I've talked to them about it. Uh, but they do they have their own artists right that's very it's very much a family these businesses and, and i get it right if i if my friend owned a company and we were best friends i'd probably be doing all the artwork right because yeah it's business it's money ultimately but it's a it's a business i'd like to get into and um like i said so i i will be doing it um so once that happens that'll be like a bucket list thing right being an artist and a skateboarder and just skateboard art alone you know i have my huge stack of wall boards right um, at yeah. home and it's like it's something I want, I want to see my artwork printed on skateboards for sure that would really is that uh, a is that stack of wall boards are they ridden or are they fresh no, all fresh all fresh oh, oh, yeah. something beautiful i, I, have, I a, have friends i was gonna say i have a stack of ridden ones i used to use as yeah. shelves in my yeah in my old room. absolutely absolutely yeah <laughs> and it's it's great i think 
I think something else, you know, that I, I kind of wanted to ask you about, about hand stamping, obviously, you know, you, you kind of said that you've pioneered the kind of specific area that you work in. Um, but with skating, I have a beautiful community that I can bounce a lot of ideas off of. There's people that are skaters that I can go skate with and spend time with and whatnot. Do you have a hand stamping community? Is there a place <laughs> where you go to go and like converse with other hand stampers and be like, yo, how's your, how's your stance today, brother? Like, you know? <laughs> No, I'm the only hand stamper that I know of. Um, I have people send me work, right? They'll try it. And um, all over the world, no one that I know locally. Um, and they'll be like, I did oil paint. I'm like, do not do oil paint. It's toxic. And I'm mm. like, stop, stop. Um, I actually don't know a lot of artists. Um, my, my good friend Blake does my tattoos. Um, my good friend Nate's a photographer. Like, I have friends that are like artists, but not... Um, the fine arts that I do, right? No painters. So it's a different um, format. So I don't really know. There's not a big community that I have of artists um, other than you know, my little monsters, <laughs> little <laughs> students. Uh, so no, not, not really. Just me. I just think, I think your art would really translate on, on, a, on a deck. Oh my God. Like, that, like hand, plain, plain yeah. background with like, oh, yeah. yeah. Just like handprints on a deck. I just think it just works, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's going to happen soon. Uh, I'll send, you know you guys, I'll send you guys some out when we um, print them. Oh, please do. We, we will <laughs> it'll, it'll become part of the set. I promise you. <laughs> I, like, I, I promise you. It'll become part <laughs> of the set. Um, awesome. No, I, it's, it's interesting that you say that, that, you know, it, it, there isn't this huge community. You, you mentioned that you have a friend who does your tattoos. And obviously throughout the show and throughout the years I've watched you, I've noticed the tattoos on your hand and whatnot. I, I have a couple of uh, tattoos on me as well. And Tom's got a couple. Um, is the artist that does your tattoos, is he drawing them and then you're getting them inked by someone else? Or is this an, a, a tattoo artist that is drawing and inking you as well? Uh, I usually come up with the concepts and the drawings, mm -hmm. but he'll fine line them and he does all the tattooing. Amazing, so, um, amazing. Yeah, and, yeah. And we've been, he's been tattooing me now for, God, like 18 years. Wow. Is he, is he, so, your, is he your only guy or do you get little pieces from other people? I have, just I have little, guy? I have little pieces from like certain people. There's a girl, uh, Lona that came down um, from Canada and she did like some stick and poke on my hand. Like it's oh, her wow. specialty, like single needle. Yeah. Um, but otherwise he does all my like gun tattooing for sure. That's incredible. We, yeah, loyal. We, loyal. <laughs> <laughs> the tattoo artist we had, um, I might not have been on the show. It might've just been off, you know, when we were just talking off the show, but he talked about this concept of people being collectors. You know, mm. so people will go around and like, you know, I got a uh, this right. person. So and, and so, I got a, this, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Which is kind of, you know, it, it's it's interesting. And it's I in the it, same kind of world and realm as collecting art, right? Except it's, you right. know, the canvas is your body. But it's, it is it right. is interesting. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I, ultimately, I, I have some room left on my body. You know, I want to like do some traveling, you know, and get some pieces all over the world would be neat. Um, from whoever that might be or their specialty. Um, mm. But, you know, gotta have time and money to travel and do it all. But that's something yeah. I want to do. As I get older, I want to do some pieces um, just around the world. Yeah, I, dude, I am very much in that headspace. I, I said to me and, me and my, uh, me and my missus, my girlfriend, um, went traveling in June of last year and we traveled through to like December, January time. And, um, and a big part of my time, my, it was my second visit to Japan. I said to her, I was oh. like, we're either leaving Japan with a traditional katana or we're leaving with me <laughs> having been tattooed. Right. One of the I two. was like, <laughs> neither of them, neither of them very likely. I was like, both are, both are very expensive. I was like, <laughs> it's, it's, I was like, I'm warning you now. They're, both are illegal. We're, no, not illegal. It's illegal to take a katana out, but it's also illegal to get tattooing at the time. As well. <laughs> They've just released it. <laughs> but, um, I, I did end up getting a tattoo and I have to admit by pure chance, it's ended up being the, in my opinion, my favorite tattoo that I've gotten. Nice. But also I think the fact that it was in an underground basement in a back alley in Shinjuku and the guy is using old rotary machines and he's got three different machines that he guns me with rather than having one with just different uh, needle caps. And god it was a beautiful experience and oh it yeah was I'm sure such a big part of it and i think I, I i agree with you i think going around and also again trying going to thailand and trying to get some of their um traditional artwork some of their i can't remember what they're called i believe it's like sa something um 
and they do a very specific specific type of um, spiritual art. And then again, all over the world, they do the you know Maori, you know tribal stuff. You get the Polynesian beautiful tribal. Again, each continent, each country, and each culture has their own beautiful way of tattooing. So I, yeah. I think that's a great idea, dude. I think going traveling at some point when COVID's less of an yeah. issue and collecting some tats from around the world is never a bad idea. <laughs> now, how, how did you guys get into this? And what do you guys do out there on your end, professionally? Oh, like here in the UK? Yeah. Oh, great question. Tom, so how do we get into podcasting? Yeah, and also just curious what you guys do. Yeah, what we do as well. Okay, <laughs> so um, well, I'll, 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 you go I'll do my version of how we got into podcasting. Okay. Um, and then I'll talk about a little bit of what, what I do as well. Um, yeah, we, we've bounced around different ideas well, and, have, that and have really. sort of like started things, you know, in fits and stops. You know, we've decided to do little projects here and there and, um, and never really, you know, we get past like step one of like thinking about what it would be and having some great like design ideas and stuff like that. And they've sort of um, petered out a bit. But honestly, Russell, like I'm not old, but I'm getting older. And, um, yeah, and I feel yeah. like, if we're, yeah, but it, like, you know, if you can do something, my son's 20, he's going to be 23 here in a couple of weeks. Um, and, you know, uh, we've had some health issues as well that we, mm. that our family has dealt with. And so um, time is short, you know, we know it more yeah. this year than ever. And so, Absolutely. yeah, this has been a great opportunity for us to, to hang out, to do yeah. something together, to to care about something together, yeah, that's to huge. work together, to get to know yeah. each other, you know, in a different way. It's yeah. been awesome, man. It's been, it's that, been, yeah, it's been super cool. Been super that's, cool. I think that's one of the things that um, drew me to like wanting to do, sit down with you guys because of the father son thing. I was like, you don't hear about all that all the time, right? Um, yeah. And just the ages, you guys are both relatively young, right? Now, no one's really young, no one's really old. You guys are like close enough to sit down and vibe together. And spend time together and i, I think it's incredibly yeah. special i don't i don't have that uh kind of bond with my dad i think it's what a blessing um and what a you know since we are all st stuck inside anyway this year like what a great way like you're saying just let's just do it right like you yeah. don't know if you have tomorrow time is short let's just do it and what a great way to spend time with your son and i i didn't have that relationship with my dad at all you know and and um you know to the day he died it we we tried we just weren't capable neither one of us were capable to kind of put it together yeah, right and um we were both limited in a way that we couldn't figure out the puzzle you know and that Ooh. sucked that really really sucked and so yeah um and for a long time with Bodie and i we were we were not meshing like we were yeah. definitely in a place where it could have gone like this for sure <laughs> right yeah. and um we brought we it was actually you brought it back it was it was i i was when when you started making your kind of dive into meditation and looking at yourself a bit more introspectively um i was not in a place to do that and you actually <laughs> were the one that pulled us around i, I was still i was a six uh, between 16 and 18 and i was a little asshole at the time and yeah. you were struggling with your own stuff and i think you managed you managed to work some more of your shit out a little bit sooner than i did which meant that you kind of pulled us around to spending more time together and then as i kind of grew into my early 20s I, i've been able to sort my shit out a bit more and i think um to, to answer from my side how we started um I, I think for me a big part of it is like tom said we've been searching for something to do as and we've done projects we've done comedy skits we've done um another podcast in the past we've done um like uh, creative work tom's written books that i've helped him with you know we've, we've done a bunch of shit and i think what really happened is i had just come back from traveling with my girlfriend and i just before traveling had been working a, a 40 hour a week job uh, which is full time in the uk on top of that like um i was a manager at the place so i i, I just knew what it was like to do the the hard work the grind and not mm -hmm. only that, be the person who's not working and being led, but the person who's organizing shit and being someone who's running the show a yeah. bit more. So I think I came back and we both agreed that I didn't want to fucking work in the, the, the standard industries that I have available to me as someone who didn't go to university. And I think we both agreed that if we could use this lockdown time yeah. to create something then it would be a possible avenue for both of us to make some revenue doing something yeah. that we really love and you know yeah. talking to incredible people like you 
um, doing okay. our MMA shows. Um, again, uh, in season two, the next in the next year, we're going to be adding more content. We'll be adding some Dungeons and Dragons content that we like right. doing ourselves, right. and we'll be adding uh, some more comedy skits and just just stuff yeah. that we enjoy doing. And I think um, I that it. was the biggest thing for me. Um, in, in terms of what do we do, um, I currently do this. This is this yeah. is my this is my full time. I do this every day. Um, whether awesome. it be posting somewhere or planning our next guest or editing our podcasts or working yeah. on the next content, whatever it may be. Um, however, before this, I was, uh, I was a telephone fundraising um, call center manager, basically. So I ran a team okay. of about 40 people in, right. in a call center doing uh, fundraising for charities across the whole world and, and charities that help, uh, help all over the world. So well, I'm sure some of that. Amazing. I'm sure some of that helps, right? With or that skill level helps with this and reaching out to people and talking and just that oh, yeah. network, that networking energy. I'm sure. I've I've always been a uh, I've always been a, a, a confident public speaker, I guess, and able to <laughs> present myself in a way that I felt comfortable with. And but I, I, I would say this has been a process for us. You talked oh, about yeah, your, massive. You know, your hand stamping. Yeah. How you you had to figure out what's right, what works, what doesn't work. You know, we, we talked about just recently our first podcast. And although we're not, you know, we're not anywhere near maybe some of the best podcasters, I feel like we're progressing. We're getting better. We're free. Mm. There's actually something to figure out here. <laughs> there's science. Uh, there's, there's actually science behind it that we're starting to figure I out. Imagine. Imagine. <laughs> like it's, it's even even down to making sure we don't talk over each other. So you might have noticed during the show when one of us wants to say something, we do a gesture like this. Because that's oh, us going, hey, bit, hey, I want to say something next. So <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> it's working things out like that that allow us to make the process really slick and look like a clean show. But really, dude, if, if I could turn the camera around, we're in a <laughs> living room with like the most shambly fucking, we got extension cables everywhere. Yeah, making it's it work. It's an absolute shit show back here. But, <laughs> but, but you know. We're professionals, so you're making it work. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, I think, Honestly, it's been one of the most beautiful things for me and Tom. I think it's allowed us to grow as people. Also, we've met people that in my life I could never dream of. We've met Olympians. We've wow. met um, professional skateboarders. We've met nice. professional climbers, um, artists, MMA fighters. musicians, MMA fighters. And it, That's oh my God, just, just the inspiration that me, especially me as a young male has had. Um, yeah. Meeting people like yourself, Russell, who again, humble so down to earth willing to communicate with us and open up about Appreciate art it. and again Thank something you. that not many guys do is open up and i think talking to you today has been an amazing way to hear you open up and talk about your oh, feelings you. on certain things and i really appreciate it absolutely yeah. thank you guys you know it's, it's it's one of those things where for me this has not only been a great experience for me and tom it's been a great experience getting to know everyone on the other end of the camera and any person yeah. we've had in person and um and yeah, I think we would love this. This is what we want to keep doing for years and years and years because it's really what makes us happy, man. And and you you've been a part of that, dude. And and I appreciate a, that. Like appreciate this is this is our first season, and and like when when people go when the hardcore homie and the dude fans in the ears go, oh yeah, but did did you see the episode with Russell in season one? <laughs> like, oh, you're not a fan of you. <laughs> What, yeah. is, what is what do seasons look like for you so will you when does it start season two how does that how great does that question. work great question so we typically are going from january to december and then we're going to do our last episode around christmas and then we're pretty much going to be done for like a month we need honestly because like i said this is not a one day a week we do the podcast right. it's right, right. every day a week we're all and not only that we're evolving the system we're adding new content we're coming up with different shit all the time so it's very much that this has been going on now. We started this in uh, June. May or June, yeah. and we have not had <laughs> pretty much a, a week off from this. So we're, we're, we're looking forward to having a bit of time off and prepping a lot of the new content. We're going to have some new graphics <clears> for <throat> our like show, like new branding and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully each year we'll then have a new season with new content to bring everyone. Basically. That's, that's great. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I'm... I'm excited for you guys because I mean you just started in June, you said. Yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. You know what oh, though, dude? I, I also say like um it doesn't go unnoticed that I'm sure a lot of people that we approach, you know, see that we're just starting out and um and 
probably make a decision of like, so what am I going to get out of that? You know, like right. they, they don't right. have much of a following, blah, blah, blah. Um, I just have to say, dude, you have, you know, you have a pretty significant following on Instagram. You have, um, you know, that's your business as well. And yeah. to some degree, um, you know, there's, this is more of you reaching out to us with your, you know, audience and us reaching to you with our audience. Certainly we're going to share it out around and everything, but I just want to tell you, man, that we appreciate that. You know, oh, not- my pleasure. You know, this is great. My pleasure. Honestly, like I said, I've, I've been asked the past few years, a few times, and I just, I never even looked at their following. It wasn't about that. I just wasn't ready for it. I wasn't lined up with that. I've never done anything in front of the camera other than a, a short video I made um, to promote a project I did a while ago. But um, yeah, this is like, like I said, I looked into your page and just the connection you guys have of father, son, and uh, the martial arts I used to be into, skateboarding I am. I just figured it, it lined up pretty well. And you guys yeah, have a great back and forth. So I, I see it being successful, especially if you guys just started. That's pretty True, incredible. Huh? It looks Thanks. like you've been doing it for years. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. it's all a, a facade. You know how we talked right. about magic? It's magic, that magic. That's yeah, right. exactly, exactly. No, yeah, it's 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 definitely been fun, and like I said, you know, it, it's been an opportunity of a lifetime. And um, you know, uh, honestly, like I said, for me again, I've 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 followed you for years, dude. I when Tom was like, "Cool, so who do you want as guests?" I was like fucking this guy i was like this guy makes incredible art i was like we need to have him at some point and i think the opportunity and and again like tom said we appreciate you uh, you giving us the opportunity to talk to you and not only that dude i hope this is a good representation that you can share uh for people to see what you're like in person uh, who you are what you bring and uh, and and why they should support and love who the fuck you are and what you do because we very much do, and I think everyone should. You know, that's, I that's where I'm at. That. Um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll round out now. It feels like a good, uh, good organic place to kind of round out. Sounds good. Um, dude, thank you so much. Uh, what we Pleasure. usually let you guys do is we say shout out anything. If there's a website, if you want to direct them to your Instagram or whatever social media you want people to go and follow you at, anyone who's watching, send them that way. What, what's best for you, dude? Yeah, just my Pangean Studios, my Instagram page, and my bio has like my gallery for originals and prints and the shop mm. t-shirts hoodies clothing we do um yeah everything's at, at pangean studios um my instagram page really is like a hub for everything and thanks for listening in amazing and uh you know, do you know what's hilarious so quickly before we move on yeah pangean studios i again being dyslexic i've been reading your name for so many years going Pangy, pa, oh, I like, no, I'm just going to put it down. I'm going to leave it for another year. I'll, I'll come back to it. And I'll, so it's P-Studio. great to know that it's Pangean. And dude, I love what it's based off of. The, what, what you told us earlier is, is freaking awesome. I think, I think that's Thank absolutely you. amazing, dude. I think the yeah. fact that you've based it on a collective human existence, uh, your, your, your um, what's it called? Your persona, your AKA uh, is pretty badass, dude. I think that's I cool. appreciate that. It means a lot. Thank you. Um, Cool. Then for us as Homie and the Dude guys, this has been episode 29. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, For us, hit us with the Holy Trinity, guys. The most important one is sharing one of our shows. Uh, Sharing is what allows other people to discover what we do. And who knows who on your timeline would love a bit of this show, guys. So please do that. Uh, As well as the other two factors of the Holy Trinity are hit us with the like and follow on Facebook and the subscribe on YouTube. Um, All that allows us to do what we do. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, that's the end of the show. Russell, man. Thanks a lot, bro. Thank you, guys. My pleasure. My pleasure, guys. Have a good one. We're chugging through. We're loving doing this stuff, you guys. Um, If you want to support us, if you want to make sure that we can keep getting, you know, better quality set, better quality lights, make the filming better. Bigger um, bigger batteries for the camera. Bigger batteries for the camera. (laughs) Yes. You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, You can do that by just liking following the page and subscribing to the YouTube channel. That is what really makes a difference to us.